J-E-L-L-O. Jell-O for delicious locked-in flavor. Jell-O puddings for old-fashioned homemade goodness bring you Baby Snooks. <laughs> It's the Baby Snooks Show, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and yours truly, Harlow Wilcox. And brought to you each week by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding. And now, let's join the happy Higginses of Sycamore Terrace. It's early morning. Not a creature is stirring. The only thing moving is the minute hand of the alarm clock in Daddy's bedroom as it moves inexorably toward... <laughs> Lancelot. Oh. Uh. It's seven o'clock. <laughs> we'll just throw oh. the covers back and get up. Oh, all right, dear. Oh. Another Monday morning. Why can't they start the week on Tuesday? <laughs> it would be the same thing. No, it's the word Monday. It's an ugly word. Other days don't have names like that. Sunday, Saturday, Thursday. Lovely names. But Monday. Great Scott. Well, what's the matter? It suddenly occurred to me. Do you know what day this is? Lancelot Higgins, if you're going to tell me it's Monday... No, no, it's more than Monday. It's the Monday. In fact, Vera, it's the first day of school. Well, what are you making such a fuss about? You don't have to go. No, but Snooks has to go. And somehow that always seems to spell aggravation. Well, maybe this year will be different. After all, she's going to that new school. Which reminds me, dear, you've got a meeting of the Parent Teachers Association tonight. Parent Teachers Association? Mm -hmm. Well, nothing like cheerful news to start the day with. <laughs> well, stop grumbling and go wake up Snooks. I'll fix breakfast. And Lancelot, please. No violence. All right, darling. Oh, Parent Teachers Association. How do I get into these things? By becoming a parent, that's how. Oh, Snooks. Snooks, baby. Mm -hmm. Are you awake? No, Daddy. Well, get up, dear. It's the first day of school. I don't feel well, Daddy. Uh, where don't you feel well? I got a tummy ache. Oh, no. That won't work this year. Try something else. I got a headache. Get up. A backache. Get up. A toothache. Why must I go through this every year? Because you're stubborn. Snooks, I don't want to be harsh. Are you going to get out of bed or aren't you? Oh, man. Well, that's a good girl. Stand up and throw your shoulders back. Mm-hmm. Now take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. Now come over here and, for Pete's sake, open your eyes. Oh, that's better. Now get dressed. Here's your little shoes and here's your little socks. Turn around. <laughs> Turn around? Why? Because I got to take off my little night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, dear. I'll get you dressed from the closet. Uh, what dress would you like to wear? The yellow one with the pink flowers. Well, you don't have a dress like that. You didn't ask me what I had. You asked me what I wore. All want. right, all right. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny. <laughs> now, be careful. You'll break yourself up. Honestly, Snooks, I don't know what's the matter with you. A lot of little children would envy you. Why? Well, you're going to a brand new school, brand new building. Mm, I don't like the teacher. You don't like her? You don't even know her? She's a teacher, ain't she? Come on, come on. I want you downstairs, finish with your breakfast, and out of the house before I finish shaving. All right, Daddy. Kiss me goodbye now, honey. And today, try to be a good girl. I will, Daddy. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Lancelot, Lancelot, 
your breakfast is ready. Be right down. Well, please hurry. Well, come in. Good morning, Miss Higgins. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Watson. My land, did you carry that big box of laundry over here yourself? Oh, I had to. If I don't do things myself, it never gets done. Well, what happened to Ralph, the man you had working for you? He quit. Just up and left. Believe me, Miss Higgins, the help problem is something awful these days. Oh, you're telling me. It ain't no fun trying to run a French hand laundry. <laughs> Anything to pick up? Yes, but I've been so busy this morning, I haven't had a chance to get it together. I suppose you had the same trouble getting your daughter Phoebe off to school. Oh, no, I didn't have no trouble at all. Well, how's that possible? Well, Phoebe's school don't start till next week. <laughs> <laughs> She's outside playing. <laughs> well, would you mind waiting a few minutes, Mrs. Watson? I'll give Mr. Higgins his breakfast, and then I'll be right with you. <laughs> and have children, believe me. They will never Dad, have to go. Dad. Hello, Phoebe. Where are you going? To that new school. I got transferred. Mine don't start till next Monday. Well, this one starts a whole week ahead of all the others, and I was going to use this week to finish my book. Are you still writing that old book? Old book? <laughs> it's just going to make me famous, that's all. What kind of book is it? It's a wonderful book. It's going to be 200 pages long. Is it like Forever Amber? A little. Is it like Gone with the Wind? A little. Is it like Dracula? A little. Gee, it sounds like a wonderful book. It's going to make me famous, Phoebe. So famous, I may never have to go to school again. Yeah, I wish I could write a book like that. And I only have three more chapters to go. But what happens in the last chapter? Well, I don't really know myself. I think I'll have him escape from the dungeon. Who? Tyrone. <laughs> I thought he fell off a cliff and got killed in chapter 20. He wasn't really dead. He wasn't? How come? Penicillin, you know, the wonder drug. <laughs> Gee, that sounds exciting, Snook. But now I can't finish it. Because I gotta go to school. Phoebe, you could do something for me. No, I can't. You don't even know what I was going to say. It don't matter. Every time you ask me to do something for you, I get into trouble. Phoebe, listen. Nobody knows, knows me in this new school, see? And nobody knows you either. What do you mean? If you went to the school for me this week... Uh-uh. I could finish my book and I'd be famous. Uh-uh. And I'd give you half of all the money I'd make. Gee, look, sir. What you have to do is to go to that new school and say you're Snooks Higgins. But I don't look like you. They don't know what I look like either. Next week, you'll be back in your own school and everything will be just fine. Yeah, I know, but where'll you be? Oh, London, Paris, Chicago. <laughs> I think I'll travel a bit, and then I'll send for you. Gosh, I'm afraid, Snook. Listen, Phoebe, you always wanted my dollhouse, didn't you? The one with all the lizards in it? Yeah, and if you do this for me, I'll give it to you. Oh, you always make it so hard for me to say no. All you have to do is sit in the school, and when they say Snook Higgins, you say present. That's all, Phoebe. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. How does it get so late so fast? Hello, Higgins. What's the rush? Oh, hello, Wilcox. I've got to get to the office. Monday morning, you know. And I've just seen Snooks off to school. Oh, what a day. Well, I think it's a beautiful day, Higgins. Bright as a dish of jello. Wilcox, life is so simple for you. Just one big dish of jello. <laughs> exactly. And right now I'm trying to dream up a new jello slogan. Well, what's the matter with the ones you have? Well, they're fine. Take six delicious flavors. Well, that's just what they are. Six delicious jello flavors. 
Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. But I'm looking for something else besides. Well, maybe I could help. Swell. But first, ask yourself, what's found only in Jell-O? Well, in our house, it's usually Snoop's. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean that famous locked-in Jell-O flavor. You know that flavor, pal. Inspiration itself. A rich fruit goodness put into Jell-O by an exclusive process and locked right in. That's what Snooks should be. Locked right in. <laughs> Higgins, forget Snooks. Concentrate on Jell-O. I know you may not have had any lately. It's some, sometimes hard to find these days because of the sugar shortage. But look, concentrate, pal. All right, how about him? Uh, I'm all a shiver for the dish a quiver. That J E L L O. Not bad, not bad. I must remember that. I've forgotten it already. See you later, Bill. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Now, children, I have all the little cards you filled out with your addresses and parents' names on them. Uh, but there seems to be something wrong with one of them. Uh, Snooks Higgins? Yes, ma'am. Will you, will you please stand up? Yes, ma'am. You didn't fill in the names of your parents. Uh, didn't I? No, dear, you didn't. I'll fill it in for you. Uh, thank you. Uh, what is your father's name? I thought you was going to fill it in for me. How can I if you don't tell me what it is? Come now, what's your father's name? Well, uh, uh, do you have to know? Yes, dear. I think it's Sam. <laughs> you think it's Sam? Don't you know your father's name? I never call him by his first name. Well, what does your mother call him? Mr. Hegan. <laughs> Snooks, are you being flippant? I don't think so. What does it mean? Flippant means fresh, and you can stay after school today until you decide to cooperate like the other students. You beast, she cried. Take your hands off me. Who do you think you are? Who's that? It's me, Phoebe. Open the window. Phoebe, what are you doing here? Looks, I just came by to tell you I ain't taking your place at school tomorrow. Why not? Because you got to stay after school. <laughs> what did I do? You didn't know your father's name. <laughs> it's Lancelot. What? Lancelot. No wonder I couldn't think of it. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Snooks, but I got to... Wait a minute, Phoebe. It's no use. I don't want to get into no trouble. You'll have to get somebody else to go to London with you. But, Phoebe... I got to go home now. Oh, yeah, here's a note from the teeth. For me? No, for your father. I won't show it to him. <laughs> You'll have to show it to him. He's got to sign it, and that ain't all. What else can it be? He's got to sign it, Sam. <laughs> And if he doesn't, you'll have to stay in the rest of the week, too. Sam? I told the teacher that's what his name was. Why did you ever pick out a name like Sam? <laughs> it's the only one I could spell. <laughs> well, goodbye, Snook. Phoebe, wait. Phoebe! Oh, gosh. Well, I might as well try to finish one more chapter before Daddy gets home. Chapter... 92. When Angela woke the next morning, she could feel Tyrone's hot, burning kisses on her throat. She quivered. <laughs> quivered. No, that don't look right. Mommy. Yes, dear? Do you spell quivered K-U-I or T-U-I? Neither. It's you are. Oh. Thanks, Mommy. Oh, there's your father coming up the driveway. Uh oh. I better hurry and get dinner ready. Sam. <laughs> Hello, little daddy. Oh, uh, good evening, sir. 
Let me take your little hat. Well, that's nice. And give me your coat, and I'll hang it up. Oh. Now, here you are, Sook. Now, sit down, little daddy. Did you have a hard day at the office? <laughs> Snooks, this isn't like you. What have you done today? Do you want me to get your pipe, Daddy? Answer me. Maybe you'd like your shoe shined. Good evening, Lancelot. Oh, good evening, dear. All right, break it to me. What has Snooks done? Done? Why, she's been a perfect angel all afternoon. Just sitting there and doing her homework. I don't get it. Can this be the millennium? Could it be that our child has turned over a new leaf? Could that be? Could be. <laughs> uh, I'm fixing dinner, Lancelot. Do you feel like a salad? I can make a joke on that, but I'm too tired. <laughs> Anything at all, Vera. I've got to eat in a hurry and get to that parent-teacher's meeting. And, oh, am I tired. You want me to rub your little feet, Daddy? My feet? I rub them. Snooks, out with it. Either you've done something or you want something. What is it? Oh, nothing, really. What is it? Daddy, I've been thinking. About what? Do you like your name? Like my name? Of course I like my name. Lancelot Higgins is a beautiful name. I don't like it. Oh, so you don't like it. No. Well, name me a name that you think is better. Sam. <laughs> Sam? Yeah, Sam Higgins. Does not sound romantic. Of all the nonsense. Sam, what kind of a name is that? Please, remember, Sam was the father of our country. The father? Yes, the father. Oh, I see. You're referring, of course, to Sam Washington. No, Uncle Sam. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, I happen to like Lancelot. Ah, uh, it's Oogly Boogly. Oogly Boogly? Yeah, Oogly Boogly. Is there anything else the matter with it? Yeah. People keep forgetting it. I never heard of anyone forgetting my name. Tell me one person who's forgotten it. Well? Young lady, do you realize I'm talking to you? Mm-hmm. Um, what was your name again? Lancelot! <laughs> it's a beautiful and a famous name. You've heard of Sir Lancelot. Have I? Of course you have. Everyone has. Who was he? Who was he? Yeah. See? You don't know it either. <laughs> For your information, Sir Lancelot was a knight of the round table. He was? Yes. I like Sam better. Now, what is this Sam business? I come home from the office. I work hard all day. Try to make a living for my family, and my daughter wants me to change my name to Sam. You'll love it, Daddy. Just try writing it. Here, on this piece of paper. Now, stop that. Enough is enough. Now, go over there and finish your homework. Mm, but, Dad... Here, finish what you were writing. Ah. Now, here are your papers. The last sentence you wrote was, uh, uh... Angela could still feel Tyrone's hot, burning kisses on her throat. <laughs> Snooks! Is this your schoolwork? Uh-huh. What subject? Arithmetic. <laughs> Arithmetic, eh? I mean spelling, Daddy. The teacher gave us this composition to read so we would learn to spell all the words. Well, fine words for a child to learn how to spell. Well, I'm going to have a thing or two to say at that parent-teacher's meeting tonight. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Courtney. How are you? Fine, Miss Fosdick. Uh, looks like the new school is going to be a boon to our neighborhood. Oh, there's Higgins. How are you, Higgins? Oh, hello, Courtney. Oh, say, Higgins, I'd like you to meet Miss Fosdick. I believe your daughter is in her class. Oh, really? No, I think it must be another Higgins. Uh, the little Higgins girl in my class is named Snooks. That's my daughter. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Oh, what? Just, oh. <laughs> oh, adopted, isn't she? No. <laughs> no? No. I have three others just like her. <laughs> just 
like her? Just like her. <laughs> oh. Miss Fosdick, may I ask who's going to preside over this meeting? Uh, why, uh... You are Miss Fosdick. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> well, then, if you please, allow me to be the first speaker. I have a number of things to say to this meeting. Uh, certainly. I, uh, certainly. We'll call it to order right now, and, and I'll introduce you. <clears throat> The meeting will come to order, please. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen of the Parent Teachers Association, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the evening, Mr. Sam Higgins. Sam! (laughs) Well, that does it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a patient man, but I happened to pick up a little composition my daughter brought home from school today. This composition was given to her by her teacher, Miss Fosdick. It was without question the most vicious, the most revolting, the most reprehensible, the most ordained. Well, it looks like Daddy, with Snoke's help, has put his foot in it again. They'll be back in a moment. We'll see how Daddy gets himself out of this. You know, there's something about that old-fashioned homemade goodness of jello puddings that reminds you of Grandmother's big sunny kitchen when swell things to eat were in the making. Only Jell-O puddings are quick and easy, and so good, they're just like Grandma's, only more so. Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding, all three cooked to velvety smooth perfection in just about five minutes. Now, let's say you're lucky enough to find a package of Jell-O vanilla pudding at your grocer's. Turn it into a super treat this way. Prepare it by the easy directions on the box and let it chill. Then place fresh fruit in the bottom of sherbet glasses, luscious sliced peaches, juicy blackberries, or blueberries... And pile your Jell-O vanilla pudding on top. That rich, creamy flavor is marvelous combined with fruit. Makes a real company dish. Jell-O chocolate pudding is grand, cram full of chocolatey goodness. And Jell-O butterscotch pudding with that old-time buttery brown sugar taste. So take whatever flavor you can find. And remember, when the sugar shortage is over, there'll be plenty of Jell-O puddings again. And now let's go back to the Higgins home. Daddy is just returning from the heated session at the parent-teachers meeting. Oh, hello, Lancelot. I've been waiting for you to get back. Oh, hello, Vera. Believe me, I told them a thing or two. Well, I hope you didn't do anything rash. Rash? They won't forget in a hurry what went on at that meeting tonight. Lancelot, Mrs. Watson called. Burning kisses. I let them have it with both barrels. Mrs. Watson called. Snooks wasn't at school today. They you think twice before they... What'd you say? Snooks wasn't at school. Mrs. Watson's little daughter, Phoebe, took her place. Why? What do you mean? Just what I said. Dead. Where is she? Lancelot, put down that golf club. I said, where is she? You can't get at her. I've locked her in the back. Now, it's no use, Vera. I'll get her. I'll get her if I have to track her down to the far corners of the earth. Oh, what have I done? What have I said to those poor people at the meeting? Oh... That poor Miss Fosdick. Well, what did you say? What didn't I say? <laughs> Out of my way, Vera. This is man's work. Snooks has to be taught a lesson once and for all. Lancelot Higgins, you stay right down here. Uh, uh, You're huh? going to listen to me for once, you and that hot head of yours. Look what happened at that meeting tonight where you made a fool of yourself. Yes, but why? Snooks deliberately No did... child likes to go to school. It's up to the parents, to us, to make them appreciate what school means. Oh. Now, there's a job for you. Well, certainly there are more intelligent ways than spanking. Name a couple. Reason for one. You can reason with a child. Take Snooks. She idolizes you. Oh. Oh, she does? Of course. All day long, in a thousand different ways, she's imitating her father. Oh. Hmm. (laughs) No kidding? Hmm? Talk to her. Tell her how you felt when you were her age. How much you like to go to school. (laughs) What are you laughing at? Like to go to school? Oh, brother. Did I ever tell you about the time I ran away and joined a circus? Yes. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) And you also told me about the time you locked a skunk in the schoolhouse overnight. Oh, I did? (laughs) I remember that. Boy, we had open air classes for a week. (laughs) Well, that's better. Now you're calmed down. You know you can apologize to those people tomorrow, but there's no apology for being a bad father. You're right, Vera. I'll go up and talk to her. No violence. 
Of course not, darling. Snooks. Yes, Daddy. Snooks, I just want... Oh, come out from under the blanket, Snooks. I'm not going to spank you. Well, come out. I am out. I'm over here in the corner. Oh. Well, who's this under the blanket? My little pillow. Ha-ha! <laughs> you weren't taking any chances, were you? Ha-ha, no. Snooks, I don't understand you. I try to be a good father, don't I? Do you? Now, you know I do. But you put so many obstacles in my way. Do I? Yes. Oh. Now, you knew I'd make a fool of myself at the PTA meeting because you weren't in school today. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. That's not the point. What's important is the fact that you missed school. I didn't miss it at all. <laughs> well, later in life, believe me, you'll appreciate how important schooling is. Now, I want you to promise me you'll never stay away from school again. I promise. And you'll always confide in me. I promise. No matter what your problem is, remember, I stand ready to help you. I love you, little daddy. <laughs> well, I love you too, Snooks. And now, before I turn out the light and you go to sleep, is there anything you want? Is there anything at all I can do for you? Mm-hmm. What? Change your name to Sam. Oh, what are you? Well, I guess Stokes never changes. He's the same sweet little imp. And next week, she'll be back with us again in just as much trouble as ever. Be sure to listen. Until then, remember Jell-O for delicious locked-in flavor. Jello puddings, just like grandma's, only more so. Or, uh, Snooks, you have a way for us to remember it. How does it go? Just a taste of jello puddings, or of jello, and you know, it's the one and only J E L L O. <laughs> I like it. Be sure to listen to The Thin Man, which follows in just one minute. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking. Shh. Here's a lady reading her shopping list. Egg, salt, calumet, satina, and La France Blueing Flakes. Oh, lady, you had me scared. I thought you weren't going to include La France Blueing Flakes. <laughs> oh, forget La France with Monday wash day? Smart woman. La France does give you easier, whiter, brighter washes. Yes, sir. La France works right along with my soap, and I can wash and blue at the same time. That means no separate bluing job. And you hang up a wash that's really special. White things, snowy, colored clothes, sparkling. I'm putting La France at the top of my shopping list right now. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.